Hello and welcome, family, to another episode of Wake Up Africa. My name is Dr. Mumbi Saraki. How are you doing? How's everything going? I really do pray that you are well in all your ways and that you're moving into living life uh, truly on your own terms. We really want to thank every single person that has subscribed to the channel. We appreciate love you so much. Please continue to like and share and comment, family. It is absolutely critical uh, because, you see, when we talk about YouTube demonetizing, us, um, you know, they've told us to reapply, change our narrative, etc., etc. It's not so much about the monetary, but it's about the video gets less pushed out there unless we now, as a collective, start to influence the algorithms by watching, by sharing um, on various different platforms. And then that kind of, you know, uh, when they see that, they'll push it more. But there's no motivation anymore for them to push certain narratives. That's why I keep saying support your own. I'm so sorry to keep going on about this, but support your own family because our narrative is so critical in this season. And many new things are coming, you know, are happening behind the scenes. We want to thank everyone. Uh, that has sent in love donations. We appreciate love you so much. And we want to thank everyone that has joined our Patreon, everyone that has been a part of our Patreon. Uh, definitely consider joining us there for as little as $2 a month to help us to continue to spread the good news of Africa um, across the continent because something is happening. It's like when we know certain narratives just by us meditating on it and rejecting it mentally, it, it kind of trips up the plans of the enemy and it changes how the narrative manifests physically. I'm telling you, it's absolutely amazing stuff, family. Now, there's a story that many have been asking me to talk about, and it's the Maasai getting um, kicked off their ancestral land in Tanzania, um, in the famous Ngorongoro, um, you know, uh, I, I don't know if it's a game reserve or what, or they, they want to make it a game reserve, but it's been known since time immemorial, um, you know, that this, that that was their land. In fact, we grew up, many of us taking like, it's like a bucket list trip where you go to the Serengeti and the Gorongoro. It was in the freaking, what's that movie? Lion King family. And, you know, so thousands of Maasai are facing eviction of their ancestral land. There's many, many different versions of why this has been done. The narrative that uh, the Tanzanian government is pushing is that this is in order to make way, to make it a game reserve and have game hunting. And they're partnering, I think they were partnering with the UAE or some Arab nation. But family, this isn't what's really happening. What's really going on, I have two kind of, um, this is my personal opinion, but the, the two analysis of why I really think this is going on is number one, remember I always tell you that anywhere where they have these, where they've just left the land, where they have these game reserves and where they have these you know, animal reserves and national parks, is where they mapped our land and saw that there was some kind of, you know, diamonds, gold, natural gas, oil. And so I, without a, a shadow of a doubt, I truly believe that the Maasai are being kicked off their ancestral land because a discovery has been made on that land to do with, you know, natural minerals. And of course, they want to, they're saying they want to um, partner with an Arab, I think the United Nations Heritage, whatever, UNESCO, um, and an Arab state to kind of have game hunting, etc., etc. And what happens, family, is the minute they make it like a game reserve or they make it like a national park, that means they can get those rubies, get those diamonds, get that gold for literally nothing. I mean, that's what's happening in Kenya, family. There's places where these Mzungus have taken land and they're saying it's like, you know, they're a conservancy and stuff like that. But if you were to see some of the British army lorries and, and, you know, excavating machines and everything going in and out, you'd be wondering if they're building a city underground or something. Just saying. So for me, I think that's one of the agendas, is that some kind of precious mineral has been found there and the future will prove me either correct or not. But the second thing, and I think I actually have to do a totally separate show on this, is something called the Abuja Declaration. And I think everyone who is a Pan-Africanist, everyone who, is, who feels they're here to liberate the motherland, 
needs to familiarize themselves with the Abuja Declaration. I'll actually do a separate show on it and even maybe go deeper in a podcast. Yeah, definitely check out our new podcast, Wake Up Africa News with Dr. Mumbi Saraki. The links are down below. Uh, because that was an agenda that was written maybe a decade or two decades ago where all the Islamic nations met in Abuja and they decided that they were going to Islamify Africa. So Africa was going to become an Islamic continent. I mean, these are not the only people who planned. France wants it to become a French continent. You know, the Mzungus want to keep colonization here. And the Arabs also have their plans. The Chinese have their plans. Everyone has a plan for Africa, except for us Africans. But you know what? That's going to change soon. Stories for other days. So they came up with this plan, family, of how they were going to make Africa like an Islamic continent. And they picked key nations where they would kind of set up their altars. Kenya is one of those nations. Nigeria is one of those nations. Tanzania is one of those nations where they would promote Islam, build mosques, which are altars, family. I wish we knew the what these houses of worship actually represent, build mosques, put their people, and this is what we've seen here in Kenya, like um, put their people, be it the Somalis or the Muslims, in key positions in government, in judiciary, in even the NGOs everywhere to have them and then raise them up because they support one another. Whereas here we're still being divided by the ancient engineered tribalism and all this stuff. So that is an agenda that has been unfolding for years, family. And I really believe this Sululu Hassan is here to promote that agenda further. But let me tell you something. For me, when I looked at this with a spiritual eye, I was like, you know, they've tried this. This is the third time that they're trying to get the, you know, the Maasai off their land. They failed. I think it was in like 2018. They failed. I'm not sure what the previous year that they tried was. And then um, now 2022, they'd better fail because family, if they succeed to do this and take a hold of that ancestral land and put an altar on there, it's just going to provoke and invoke this end time war, which seems to be, you know, the Armageddon, which seems to be kind of brewing East, in East Africa. But if they manage to do that, it's going to provoke something. Because you see, as I said, family, all these things, the, the emeralds, the rubies, the diamonds, we can replace those just like that because we are those. And by us, our presence being somewhere, we, we can, those things happen. I mean, it's on such a deeper level than that, but that's like the most basic way to say that's how connected we are to nature. And if this happens, then that, that's going to accelerate this reset that nature is doing. You see, there's, two res there's a reset war between the New World Order agenda and nature. That's a whole story for a whole other video. But watch this space, family. And what I can say is, reject this spiritually. Stand with the Maasai. I think I even signed a petition and all this stuff. Stand with the Maasai. Because this will, you know, our people, not enough of our people are ready. And that's the only reason, you know, that some of us would want to kind of not delay, but um, not bring forward that end time war, which has already happened in the spiritual East and is just waiting to penetrate physically. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you agree with what I'm saying or do you think that this has happened for another reason? Until next time, family, please uh, don't forget to support the channel either with a love donation or, you know, even by following our podcast, Wake Up Africa with Dr. Mumbi Saraki or uh, the Dr. Mumbi Show, the podcast edition. Check us out there and consider joining our Patreon where we do give a book a week and there's so many more shows there. Until next time, family. Tuko pamoja.